Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to another episode on my Flood Damage 968. In the previous episode, we removed the cam, replaced all of the wearables in there and put it back and put it correctly on time. That is waiting patiently for me to do the next step. For now, I've got it covered up with rags because I still want to complete all of this stuff here in the front of the engine. Double check the timing and then we'll put the cam cover back on and the fuel rail cover back on and get the whole thing to be the way it should be again. If you've missed this episode, I'll put a link for you up above so you can go catch up. So in this episode, we are going to dive further into the front of the engine. Um, I need to pull off this uh, balance half sprocket at the top and I need to pull off the one at the bottom. I want to get them cleaned. Um, the same goes for many of these things. I've cleaned quite a bit already, but you can still see there's, there's some dirt in there that I need to clean. So I need to open up this more. In order for me to get this cover off on the back, I need to get these sprockets off. So those will go. And then I'll just do a further general diagnostic of what's going on in here so we can see whether we have covered all the issues that we have on this block. My goal for this episode is to have this engine running the way it should. There's a lot that needs to happen before that is done. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. So in the previous video, I showed you that this Hall Effect Senders plug has disintegrated. This is a common problem on Porsche 968s and 944s. Um, I was thinking I'll have to buy a new one, which is about 100 euro at the moment from Bosch. Luckily, my friend Patrick, where I get all of my secondhand 968 parts from, told me that I do not have to replace this. I can fix it. And he actually had a solution for me, which was this little plug and this little rubber boot. And all I have to do is break this little old plug into pieces so that I can get these little pins out. And once I have those pins out, I can just repin them into this plug and I'm done. This is all of a couple of euros uh, to do. I'll put a link in the description where you can find these plugs. And hopefully that'll save you guys a lot of money down the line that you do not have to replace your whole effect sender if it's not broken. <laughs> As you can see, I've now got the old plug removed. This was super easy. It's just the, using the tools you've got um, to get it nice and clean. You can see I've got all of these terminals perfectly clean now. It came off really easily. I used a pick and I used a small little needle nose pliers and I used a, a wire cutter and I used a hammer very lightly and it just brittled away. So this is uh, now ready for me to do the next step. And that is to slide on this little boot also on these guys that should just help it slide a little bit easier there we go this is looking good all right before we put the pins into the plug just make sure that you pull these little hooks up a little bit so that they can click into the new plug and the order of the wires are red green and black and the plug should look like this not like this if it's like this you've got the order wrong it has to be like this and then you should simply have to slide the little prongs in and with a bit of luck they'll come through the other side and we can just pull them until they click and now we just slide the cover over like that there we go, good as new. Let's move on to those balance shaft sprockets. To get the balance shaft sprockets off the car, I need a special tool and that's the, this guy. You can buy it from Porsche, it's not very expensive. Or some other brands make it as well. And you need a 17 millimeter socket. And the other thing that's really important is that to make sure when you take it off that you put it back into the same spot. They also have timing marks. You cannot see it very well, but you can see there's a mark in the in the timing belt cover and then if you say look at the same spot in the back there's a chip in the sprocket that tells you it's, it's top dead center and the other thing that's important is that the top sprocket has a zero inside the little circle there and if we go to the bottom one you'll see that the zero actually sits on the opposite side inside this little slit um, it's important that you put them back the correct way because that's the way you time these balance shafts 
um, but it's not really very difficult. So I'll get these guys off, which will allow me to get this cover off. And once the cover is off, we can start looking at the rest of the stuff that needs servicing. Oh, this is gonna be tough. Not bargaining on this big so tight, but there we go. All right, so that's the uh, sprocket cover and its bolt. I'll get these guys cleaned up, and I think this is going to be tough to get off. Yeah. So that's the sprocket out. As you can see, it's quite rusty, but I'll clean that up with some steel wool and uh, copper brushes and all kinds of stuff to make sure it's good. The seal seems to be weeping a little bit. And I honestly don't know if I have a new seal for this. So I'll have to maybe order them. Um, it's not a bad idea, actually. I think I'm going to replace these seals. But for now, let's get the other sprocket off and then we'll get them cleaned. Mm -hmm. Before I pull the sprocket off, I just want to show you where that zero is, and you should be able to see it peeking through that slit right there. There you go. All right, now that I've got the two balance shaft sprockets off, I can almost get this cover off. It's being held on by one more 10 millimeter bolt right in there. Once I have this rear cover removed, I'll clean the engine again, make sure it's sparkling clean and then we can start looking at what else needs replacement down here. Okay. Okay, so this is a long bolt, it's not a short one. Good to remember. Now she should come free. And she does. It's cleaning. Many hours later. I'm satisfied that I've got most of the gunk off of this block. In here was a nightmare, it was just full of crap. Um, the pump as well here, the aircon pump was completely filled with junk. Um, so it's now mostly clean, at least clean enough for me to start continuing my work. I think a lot of this oil that I found here is coming from back here where there's an o-ring. I'll be pulling this off and replacing all of the seals inside of here. And I'll do the same for the bottom one. And then quickly on to another question that I was asking myself uh, for the past year is, will I be replacing this water pump? And um, I don't think I have to, if you listen to this. This pump is in perfect condition. These bearings are not failing. I am therefore not going to replace this pump because it's not leaking and it's looking good and it's sounding good. So this is staying in its spot. What I have discovered however, is if I go onto this air conditioning pulley, listen to this. That guy is completely toast. So um, I'll be looking for a rebuild set for that. But for now, I'm going to order some parts so that I can rebuild the balance shaft seals. And then once they arrive, we'll start stripping back the engine some more. Four to six days later. So my parts have arrived. I've got the O-rings for the balance shaft seals and I've got two different balance shaft seals. They are not exactly the same size, so you can't really mix them up. So I just need to replace them like for like. I've also got these little invisible seals that you can't see. They're super thin. And while I was busy ordering, I figured I'll also replace the seal that sits on the camshaft on the front. This is in essence the oil pump seal. So that'll be refreshed as well. And um, you guys remember how I said I will not be replacing that water pump. Even though I don't have to, 
This guy has been waiting on the shelf for the best part of a year and a half. So I think I'm going to replace the pump anyway. So that everything is new and everything is fresh and it's ready for the next couple of years. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to take off the three bolts that holds this one on. Uh, down here, it's the same story. There are three bolts, two in the front, one in the back. But I think in order for me to get this mount off, I'll have to remove the power steering pump as well. So I'll have to do that. I think I'll see when I get down there. But for now, I'm just going to see what I run into. If I have an issue, I'll tell you guys. This should be fairly straightforward. So I think uh, let's just get into it and uh, get these things removed. <laughs> So now we have the top balance shaft cap on the workbench. I have the old oil seal. You can see I drilled a hole through it, pulled it out. And the new oil seal has the same look as this one. So it's got little circles. If you look at the bottom one, you'll see it's got squares. So that's how you know which one is which and because they're slightly different sizes. Um, the wood rough key did not really survive. I could probably reuse this if I really wanted to. But I ordered a new one just in case, so this will go in. And I've got the new O-ring that needs to go in. So the first thing we have to do is just lift this up. And then underneath here, there should be, if all is well, a plastic foam. But I might not have it. And then I have to go think whether I have to add it. Interesting. I can't seem to find it. Let me just... Well, there's nothing on here. All right, let's see if it's in here maybe, or even on the shaft. It's not in here either. All right, so that makes this job fairly straightforward. I just have to remove this O-ring. Right. O-ring isn't too bad. Uh, it's still nice and soft. So, I'll throw this into my parch washer and then uh, when it's clean, I'll bring it back and we will start reassembly. Five minutes later. All right, so the balance shaft cover is all cleaned up now so I can reassemble. I also found traces of previous mechanics here. You can see over here, there's some damage to the housing and also down here, there's some damage to the seating surface. Now I'm hoping that this is not the reason it was leaking um, I've cleaned it as good as I can. Um, I'll add some sealant into that area. Hopefully that'll keep the, um, the new seal together with that. It'll keep it nice and dry. Yeah, uh, there's not, not much I can do about this unless I go look for a new cap, which I'm not really in the mood for today. So I'm going to try and build it up further. So the next thing for me to do is just get, get the O-ring on. Then I can put this back onto the car and then I'll slip this guy on. So let me just show you what I'm supposed to get it's almost like cellophane this is the little ring and it's supposed to sit right there i have to admit this looks like it might be too small if you ask me but anyway, maybe it's still on the on the balance shelf let me, let me go see let's just have a look here oh yeah oh no it's still there okay right so this needs to come off and then uh, we'll glide the new one on Okay, right, there it is. I managed to get it off the shaft. I'll just quickly finish cleaning the shaft. And then we put the O-ring on this, get this onto the housing again. Then we'll put the new clear gasket on, then this guy slides on, and then the new seal goes on. And then we should be done with this, the balance shaft.
bracket goes in first. Now we can slide this guy over. I'm just gonna oil it again. Make sure we've got good lubrication for startup. And the last guy to go in is the oil cell itself. As with before, I do not have a special tool for this, but a 32 millimeter socket works perfectly. All right, that's on. Now we install the new Woodruff key in the cleaned hole. All right, so I'm hoping this guy is now uh, oil tight. I do not trust this because that gash that's in here below down here is quite big. Um, but there's only one way to find out. So that is uh, to run the engine and see what it does. But um, we'll see, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced. I might have to buy a new cap. All right, so I need to get this bracket off. And to get this bracket off, I need to remove the power steering pump. So I've temporarily put back the tensioner so that I can release that nut and then I should be able to pull the power steering pump off and once the power steering pump is off I can get this bracket off. Alright so this has been a learning experience for me. Um, I'm hoping that I can pass my learning on to you. Um, I think I'm going to see if I can find another cap for this. I do not like the way the seal went in. I'm just not happy with this. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find a new one somewhere or maybe a good used one. The other problem I'm having is that I can't get this bracket off without removing the steering pump, which is sitting there. And the steering pump won't come off its bracket unless I have all of these lines disconnected, which means I have to drain it. Uh, and if I have to drain it, then I'd like to rebuild it because I think that might be one of the things that is leaking underneath the car. Why I've got that massive oil slick down there. I'm also running out of time to work on the car because the next couple of weeks in my day job is going to be very, very tough. Um, so I'm going to end the episode here. Um, I know I didn't get to run the engine, but there's just too much work to do here. So maybe in the next one, I'm not promising anymore, but I'll do my best. I'll order the parts for the power steering rebuild kit and then i will um, try and find a new one of these and i'll see you guys in the next video until then goodbye